Sherry, this mural down at Heron Station was created by Pat Durr, who was just one of the many artists mourning the loss of the Canadian Conference for the Arts. The boxes have been packed and the arrangements have been made. For almost seven decades, the Canadian Conference for the Arts has been the star advocate emphasizing the importance of a unified national culture. After massive government cuts to cultural spending, the sun is setting on the CCA. There's always been periods when I haven't been as abstract as other times. Pat Durr was the visual arts representative on the board of the CCA in 1984. Probably for fairly recent stuff. It's as much needed today as it was needed then. I think there are all kinds of issues. I hear statements from the various members of the government which do not show any understanding of the arts, the issues of the arts, nor the importance of the arts. Other countries have long ago recognized that culture, art, is very important in all aspects, external affairs, uh, activities with other countries within the country. Uh, I think that an organization that brings artists of all types together, the actors, the movie people, the people who sell the work, the pe theater people who put it on, it's very important that they get together and talk. The CCA was founded in 1945 by a group of artists, including Lauren Harris of the Group of Seven. Basically, the mandate of the CCA is to bring people together, to bring everybody together around issues of cultural policy and, and, and uh, helping people identify what they have in common, as opposed the common interests that they have, as opposed to uh, the, the specific interests that they have. The, one of the issues about the uh, Canadian cultural sector is that it's extremely rich and diversified, but it is extremely fragmented and very poor. This organization provided all of those people with the possibility to, uh, to identify issues of common interest. Even as the boxes are being packed up, Durr says the CCA's role is just as vital as it was back in 84. I think because that was a time when everyone was much more aware of Canadian culture. Car fact was very strong in that time. Uh, the Canadian Conference of the Arts was very well recognized and had very important people sitting there from all aspects of Canadian culture. Melissa Gruber is the advocacy director at the Canadian Artists' Representation. Her job is to help make an industry of visual arts. The CCA was most helpful for us to make sure that uh, we weren't missing anything in particular. So, uh, like they would monitor what was going on at committees, and like we don't have enough staff on our own to have someone watching all of the committees that are happening all the time, as an example. Um, and also, there were a lot of things in the Copyright Act, um, like the education example. We didn't really focus on. Uh, because we knew that the CCA was working on it and that there were other arts organizations that were also concerned about it that were um, that we could work with to make sure it didn't get lost while we focused on the artist resale right which was specific to visual artists. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult to make sure that things aren't getting missed that if the government's you know sneaking something into a bill somewhere that you wouldn't think to look for it um, that those kinds of things don't go through without anybody noticing. Um, and it will be like that, that forum in which to, um, to work on projects together um, will certainly be missed. And also having someone letting us know when there's something that we should be concerned about and things like that. The Conservative government did not respond to the 25th hour's request for comment, but heritage critic Pierre Nantel says a loss for the arts is a loss for Canada. I think that the lesson that many people get to, go to understand now is that the, the, the louder you speak, the easier you'll get your head cut off. You know? Seriously, I think that in uh, the copyright bill reform, uh, I think that they were uh, for sure the most vocal group uh, to unite uh, most creators around Canada. And uh, they were quite uh, critical about uh, the reform. While the CCA did many things with the conferences, 
they brought people together whose voice was not always happy with what the government was doing, and they presented those things forward. I mean, the government just doesn't want to tolerate being criticized. While the government's budget leaves room for adjustments, for most artists in Canada, every penny counts. The reality is most artists in Canada, from their art, are going to be living under the poverty level. What they're producing is important to Canadians. Um, the cultural tourism market brings a lot of revenue into the Canadian economy. So it's important that we support our artists and that we have people producing content. So it's a celebration of what, what we are as Canadians and who we are as Canadians. It's a way to showcase our talent. Um, and there is so much talent in Canada. For these artists, there's a small window of opportunity to take up the torch for the CCA. Because so many people have said that, you know, if this organization did not exist, we would have to invent it, uh, the board decided also to keep it uh, in, in a dormant state. So the corporation exists, there will be a transition board, uh, the, the charitable status, which is not something easy to get, is, uh, is going to be preserved uh, by doing the, the right reporting. Uh, hopefully over the next 18 months, people who have said that, you know, have recognized the value of having this sort of umbrella organization will come together and, and uh, hopefully uh, resuscitate it. So I guess there's a sense of relief that, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be over soon because it's, uh, it's been difficult L letting the staff go. Uh, they were extremely loyal to the last minute. This organization has really played a, a, a very impressive role uh, over the past 67 years, and, um, and I think it, you know, it still can. I'm sorry to see it slipping away, because we're not going to have the, the funding for a long time. It's going to mean everything moves backwards. With such a short deadline for any chance of a revival, most have already said their final goodbyes. For the 25th Hour, I'm Danielle Clausen.